I'm going to put a filter on what Dr. Donington just discussed, and that is the filter of gender. First, I'd like to define a few terms. Sex groups individuals into one of two categories based on their reproductive role. Gender are the social beliefs that we impart upon each sex. Gender schemas are the implicit patterns of their behaviors, traits, and preferences of each gender. And gender roles are the social ideas of how we believe each gender is expected to behave. Now, social and psychological studies about men, women, and their behaviors have demonstrated that there are groupings of words that we typically associate with one gender or the other. For instance, women are typically described as warm, sensitive, nurturing, communal, expressive. Words that are often used to describe men are agentic, assertive, competitive, instrumental, and task-oriented. But if there's an individual who violates these gender schemas, there's a backlash effect. And that backlash effect disproportionately and negatively affects women. In fact, several studies have demonstrated that both men and women assign a lower status to women more so than men who engage in self-promotion, salary negotiations, and have a task-oriented style of speaking. But if you think about it, words that you would use to describe a surgeon are agentic, assertive, competitive, task-oriented. So by definition, being a woman in surgery, more specifically, being a woman in cardiothoracic surgery, a highly male-dominated subspecialty, we are inherently violating gender schemas, and we all suffer from this backlash effect. Now, in studying gender bias, we see that its effects as early on as in medical school. In a study evaluating the medical student performance evaluations, it was noted that standout words and achievement words such, like, such as outstanding, great performer, quick learner were more often used to describe male students, while caring words such as compassionate, sensitive, empathic were more often used to describe female students. Gender bias also affects, as we all know, specialty selection. In a 1995 study, 96% of female students compared to 0% of male students viewed surgery as unfavorable to their gender. But what's even more concerning is that in a more recent study, some of these perceptions are actually being echoed by potential mentors. In a study from 2010 of surgical faculty, male faculty were less likely to agree that surgery was a good career for women. Now, even for those women who decide that they want to do surgery anyway, despite all of these factors, gender bias is affecting their ability to match. In a study on the recommendation letters of applicants for surgical residencies, male applicants were more likely to have standout words, focus on their achievements, ability, scholarship, and even the simple use of the applicant's first name. On the other hand, more general, pleasant terms like delightful, comments on personal or physical appearance, comments on work ethic and doubt raises were more often applied to female applicants. Gender bias also carries over into residency. In a, more recent, in a recent study by Dr. Sherry Myerson on OR, uh, OR autonomy, it was demonstrated that female residents were given less autonomy in the OR as per evaluations using the Zwisch scale. In a separate study from OHSU evaluating OR autonomy in laparoscopic cases, once again, female residents were given less autonomy in the OR even after factoring in PGY level and technical ability. A study on MedHub evaluations demonstrated that comments for men were more positive than comments for women and were more often to have standout terms. And by the way, some of these evaluations are used to write recommendation letters for fellowship applications. And overall, it, a study from, sponsored by the Association of Women Surgeons demonstrated that 
88% of surgical residents reported gender bias manifested as anywhere from lack of respect from the medical team to difficulty in finding a job. As attending surgeons, we know that a woman physician typically scores lower with patient satisfaction ratings than male physicians, despite similar practices. Although I will admit that the data on patient satisfaction scores, there are conflicting data on it. Women physicians typically score lower with teaching evaluations from both medical students and residents, which by the way, has an indirect effect on in our ability to get promoted. And a Medicare database study looking at referral patterns demonstrated that physicians are less likely to refer to female physician, and that women surgeons suffer an extraordinary backlash following a surgical complication, whereas male surgeons do not. And I'm not telling you all of this to get us all depressed. I'm telling you this because this must change. And the STS recognizes this. So the board of directors reached out to WTS and asked us to take a deep dive on the issue of gender bias, and so we did. We developed a survey based on a validated gender bias tool, and we invited all members of the WTS, STS, and TSRA to respond, and we had an overwhelming response. This is a five-point Likert scale. Responses range anywhere from strongly disagree on the left to strongly agree on the right. The width of the rectangle represents the percentage of responses that are in each category. So, in response to a statement that is positively phrased, meaning demonstrating behavior supportive of women in the workplace, ideally, the mean should be above three, i.e. agree. In response to, in meetings, people pay just as much attention when female surgeons speak as when male surgeons speak, women cardiothoracic surgeons had a mean score of 2.4, meaning they did not agree. In response to a negatively phrased sentence, ideally, once again, the mean should be lower, meaning disagree, than three. In response to, female surgeons are less likely to have influence on, pol on departmental politics, women cardiothoracic surgeons scored a mean of four. I'm gonna give you another example. And this one probably will resonate with a lot of the women in the room. In response to, it is common for a female surgeon to present an idea and get no response, and then for a male surgeon to present the same idea and be acknowledged, women cardiothoracic surgeons scored a mean of 4.1. And so overall, the survey had 15 different scenarios representing exclusionary behaviors, a biased work environment, the challenges of uh, work-life integration, and what we indicated, what women cardiothoracic surgeons indicated, was that overall, our work environment was not very supportive of us. Now, interestingly, we also asked the male surgeons the exact same questions because we wanted to know what their perception of, bias, of gender bias was. And this is a summary of the results. I recognize it is a very data-packed slide. I do not expect you to evaluate and process every granular detail of it. Responses from women are on the left. Responses from men are on the right. What I want you to take home from this is that responses from men and women diverge more often than they converged. And so given that less than 10% of currently practicing cardiothoracic surgeons are women, and even less than that are in positions of, le of leadership or influence, women cardiothoracic surgeons are practicing with colleagues and leaders who do not even perceive, much less acknowledge, the inherent disadvantages in which we are practicing. So it is incumbent upon us to increase awareness on gender bias, but more importantly, to advocate for policies that will assist in mitigating the negative impact of these biases. Thank you.